do, although we we're going to have um, evangelist um, Terrell King, but unfortunately he had a bereavement, so he can't make it. Um, so we're, we're praying for him. But he did say he'd come for us on the 5th of uh, February, and so he's still coming. But it's our um, joy yes. and our the grace of God that I asked Evangelist Lati, and he was more than happy to come. Amen. And he's been having tremendous impacts in individual hearts and in our church. So such a the grace of God, and then also double bubble or triple bubble or whatever. <laughs> so God's just doing a, a consistent move through him. And all I can ask is that, you know, Evangelist Lati always plays his part, but us. Just that open hearts, yeah. cast away that resistance because that would be something amazing again. Yeah. Just say that. Amen. Let's walk them off. Come on. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, Jesus has risen from the dead. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. He died and he rose on the third day. Because of that, we rejoice. Amen. 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 Let's just come to our feet, amen. I'll be there. Well, let's check out some cobwebs, man. <laughs> amen. Put our hand lifted and let's give God praise and glory right now. Amen. I tell you what, it's always a great honor to minister the gospel, amen, to preach in this church, amen. It's a great job to hear, you know. I love you guys, you guys are very responsive mm. to the word of God, I love it. Amen. When you're responsive like that, you bring back the person amen. Come on, come on, amen. So please, push, don't cool me down, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. Yes, yes. Just so, I know some of you, some of you are, are still in sleeping mode. Just to wake you up, amen. I've got some good beats here. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is here with me all the time. Amen. Let's go for this one. <laughs> where, where does the sheep get its airport? Yeah. Come on now. I'm just going to know that. Where does the sheep get its airport? I'll tell you. Bah. Bah. Shop. Sure. <laughs> there you go. No Baba, it's Baba. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I've got another one for you, man. Hallelujah. Why did one traffic light say, what did one traffic light say to the other? Stop looking at me. I am changing. Hallelujah. I've got some more in there, but I'm going to talk in a minute. Hallelujah. She's in the mood. I must have two money for free. Amen. She's in the mood. I must have done one. Amen. Another one right here. Amen. Somebody said, I have a fear of speed, of speed bumps. But I am slowly getting over it. Give my praise again. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I want to preach to some of this this morning, amen. You will not live it like a king in Jesus' name. Amen. When you come to church, we preach the gospel. That's right. The gospel is a good news. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you will not leave there that you came in Jesus' name. Amen. You might give me with questions. 
you will live it with answers in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You might give me a confused amen. You will live it delivered in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. My text is the book of Acts, chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 10. Before I read the scripture, how many of you have heard about most of you must have? Pastor Ruby, the Ruby Brothers, mm -hmm. it's five, it's five, it's five of them. Five of them, they made, they were saved, saved in a fellowship, they're still saved, okay? Amen. Four of them are pastors. Mm -hmm. And the last one is still doing, the other one is, the one has got a pastor, is doing something for God. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Would it be great if you, all of your family are saved? And yes. You all of your brothers and sisters are saved. Mm, your aunt is your uncle, your siblings. There's no greater joy in them when your siblings are saved in their right mind, living for God and doing something for God. Come on, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. My text is the book of Acts 10, verse 4. We're going to read. Amen. The Bible says, Cornelius, this is a new living translation. The Bible says, Cornelius is stirred at him in, in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. And the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God. As an offering. Mm. Let's bow here and close our eyes. Father Lord, in the mighty oh, name of Jesus. Oh, thank you again. What an honor to preach this gospel. Thank you for the anointing in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for the wonderful people. They came here this morning. They contend with your presence. They lift up your name and worship you. Father, I'm asking you, Lord God, to use me to bless your people this afternoon. Lord, I'm asking you to arrange my lips of play. I'm asking you to fill my mouth with your word, oh Lord. I lay in my heart. I lay in my mind. I lay in my vocal cords. Lord God, fill my mouth with your word, oh God. As I open my mouth, let your word go forth, oh God. Let your counsel go forth, oh God. Let your word have a free course. And you will be glorified. And you will be magnified. And you will say, wow. God is in this house. I will glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. Let's say it again. Amen. Give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I felt the glory of the sisters in there. Amen. Come and talk to you, man. My hair is open. Hallelujah. Amen. In our know, text, that is great. I'm going to read the whole, the whole full text. It's Acts 10, 1 to 4. Let's read it together. The Bible says, There was a certain man in Syria called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man, and one who feared God with all of his household. If you look at that verse, he didn't say he's a Christian, but he said he feared God. Mm. Lock that away. He feared God with all of his household. Who gave harms? Harms is like gifts. Mm. He gave generous gifts to the people. And he prayed to God always. About the ninth hour, you see, prayer. Prayer. Mm, yes. He prayed to God always. Mm. Prayer is key. Yes. Lock that away. Come on. Hallelujah. He prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming down and saying to him, Cornelius. Oh, it's not my dad. Cornelius. <laughs> <laughs> and when he observed him, he was afraid. And said, 
What is it, Lord? So he said to him, Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. A memorial. Do you know there are many memorials in this place? Hallelujah. I'll continue. Memorial. Whatever you do for God is a memorial. Yes. I just took that away. I just took that away. It has come to me as a memorial before God. Verse 5. Now send men to Joppa and send him and send for Simon, whose son is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. Hey! Can you see the specific? Mm. The specific. That's why you can't do suffer anyway. Mm. Oh, come on. The will of God has got addressed. Yeah, come on. Took that one away. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. He was lodged with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. And he will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continually. And so he had explained all these things to them and he said to Job, I break it down. Cornelius was, was sleeping. He saw a vision. God gave him a message. There's a man of God that that's, that's living in that location. The house is by the sea. A salmon called the Tana. So that man of God, I want you to go and fetch him and bring him to your house. That was what the whole story was about. If you're still in the Bible, verse 1 to verse 2, we, we found out that Cornelius was a Gentile. He was not a Jew. He was like you and I. We were not a Jew. Mm -hmm. The other man, those, those, those donuts, call yourself a black Jew. Anyway, look at that. Look at that. Someone here. We're Gentiles. We cried aloud. Amen. So, from verse 3 to verse 6, God sent an angel to tell Cornelius to get Peter. Verse 7 to verse 8. Cornelius obeyed God's command and said to Peter. And when the angel who spoke to him at the party, Cornelius got his servant ready and sent him forth. My first point is his prayers. When you look at our text, even in verse 4, it says, Your prayers, your prayers and gifts to the poor has been received by God as an offering, as a memorial. In verse 13, amen, it says, So Cornelius, so Cornelius said, Four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Again, it's related the story to them again. I was praying and I was fasting. Mm. And I know you guys have been praying and fasting. I was fasting with you on Wednesday as well. Yes, yes. Believing God for you. Yes. This is to tell you when you pray, amen, it's not in vain. Mm. When you pray, amen, it's like a memorial before God, amen. When you fast, amen, it's not in vain, amen. It's a memorial to God, amen. God keeps good record Amen, that's right. of your sacrifices. I'm going to be a little fool. The rest of you are lying. <laughs> You're all lying. <laughs> we all love food. That's right. I love food. Yes, yeah. My goodness. Rice and peas, chicken and bread. <laughs> you know, and if you're from Africa, jollof rice. Come on now. Hey. Come on. 
And if from England, she may change your name. You will listen, man. This is in our family, man. Friday night is she may change. My wife, she's banned from the Queen of Friday nights. She may change. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Take off. No cooking love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are all of food. We all of food. Come on now. Yes. You know? You know? I mean, you know when you're fasting, isn't it amazing? When you're fasting, that's when somebody will pass your chicken. Right. Isn't that amazing? Come on, preach. You know, those are everything serious nice. Excellent. When you're fasting, how come it's when you're fasting, that's when your souls are rumbling? Mm. You woke up you woke up Monday morning, you're okay. Tuesday, you're fine. When you say, okay, I'm gonna fast, and then boom. Come on, preach. Yeah, hallelujah. Mm. When the Bible says amen, your prayers. It's a memorial to God. Mm. That's why as a church in there, we need to pray. Yes, yes, yes. You guys have more in prayer. You want to go to the house in there. Even if just 10 minutes on your way to walk in there. Please go to bed earlier. Mm. Go to bed 10 minutes earlier, 5 minutes earlier, half an hour earlier. Go to bed earlier, start your day with prayer. Yes. Nothing happens with that prayer. Come on. I'm telling you, nothing else with that prayer. Prayer changes everything. Mm. Worry doesn't. Yes, preach it. You call it prayer, amen. And what is it to this man? Your prayers. And this guy is not even saved. Mm. He's not even saved. Come on, preach. Prayer. Prayer is key, amen, to revival. Prayer is key to break food, amen. This man begin to pray for his family. Begin to pray for his household in them. Even though he has not been regenerated, even though he has not been converted, mm. but he still pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Prayer is the answer to every problem. Mm. Prayer is the solution to every 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 lost cause. Come on.
that neighbor or that person that is doing you sickness night. Before you grab your rapper and tie it down your waist. <laughs> eh? Before you go out and start fighting the person, have you prayed and fast for them? Mm. Come on. Have you, have you ever even said, God, why is this person like this? For the Bible says we will wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of this person darkness, against spiritual also weakness in the heavenly places. Take on the whole of God. Mm, yes. But we will start in the day. Prayer and fasting on lockdowns. Yes, that's right. I've prayed and fast for people that are slain. God! As a prayer and fasting for them, as they come back yes, to, to Christ. Yes. Honestly, one who spoke to them, I don't know. <laughs> what? All I know is came back. Yes. <laughs> and they see something God in Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. I want to be loved this morning. Give me a nice short us. And secondly, he said he gave gifts or arms. A gift. And I, I want to take show this. So what is this arms about? Is it, is it, it, the arms is an outward sign of Christian love for others. Mm. Generally, it involves some type of sacrifice on behalf of the giver in order to provide for the needs of the other. In so doing, we put bonds of community and fault. Arms. Do you know when you go on outreach on Saturday, you're giving arms yes, to the lost. You're bringing Jesus Christ as a gift to the lost. Yeah. When you go and impact him to other cities and men, you're giving arms to the poor. You're giving gifts to the poor. That gift is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. When you when you when you come to church, you see a new person, you reach out to them, amen. You exchange numbers, amen. You you, you talk to them, amen. You drop them all on, on the way home, or, or maybe you pick them up for church, amen. You're giving hands. Yes, yes. And my Bible says, amen. Cornelius. Cornelius. Put your name on it, amen. Put your name on it. Your prayers and your gifts to the poor has been received by God as an offering. The coffee ladies, mm, come on. The, the Sunday school workers, come preach. The ushers, mm. the ministers, the setting of tea, amen. My Bible says, amen. All of this is you've done, amen. He has been received by God as a memorial. Mm. Keep your praise, amen. Hallelujah. He has been received. It is, it's not in vain. Yes, it doesn't even matter. If, it doesn't matter if the recipient said thank you or not. <laughs> Come on. Uh. <laughs> You've done this as unto the Lord. The Bible says that God has received it as a memorial. Come on. Uh. Come on. Glory. God receives all the sacrifice you make. You go and impartate. You come back late on Saturday night or some of you Sunday morning. And you have to get back up in the morning in church to set up. The Bible says God has received it as a memorial. Yes. So I wonder how I many memorials have you got? Mm. How many? And I wonder if you have any. Mm. It's only better for you too. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. God is here. Come on. In the book of Acts, amen. Acts 10, verse 1 to verse 4, amen. Amen. And God remembered Cornelius' prayers and his generosity to others. God remembers. Mm. All those things you don't behind the scenes for other people. Yeah, come on. The phone call, the cold night follow up. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, Some of you are out to jump on the bus, on the tube, just to follow for somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. God remembers. Come on now. There are marvels in this place. Experienced marvels in this place. You see those single young marvels come in and you embrace them. Mm. You took them on board, amen. 
you need to nudge them, amen, and help them how, you know, how to love their husbands, amen, how to cook good food for their husband as well, amen. Hallelujah. You know, it's part of the package, you know. You know what I mean? It's part of the package, you know what I mean? 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 <laughs> Come on now, you know what I'm saying? It's a full packet, and you can teach you young men and men how to love their how to love their wives. Yes, man. How to serve their wife, amen. The only ones, amen. The Bible says all of this is in the movie. Yes. As a close. Isn't it amazing? This man is minding his own business. God spoke to him in a vision. And immediately he obeyed. Yes. Immediately he got through his, he got freedom of the servant. He said, No what? Yes, go, 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 go. go straight and fetch this man. Go to so so place and then find this man and bring him to me. And that was Peter. Cornelius responded. Cornelius simply obeyed him. In verse 5, he said, Now send me to Joppa. Send for Simon, whose soul is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea, and he will tell you what you must do. The will of God has got an address. You cannot fulfill the will of God for your life anywhere. You can't just leave and go to a God's called you here. Oh, I'm going to go again. Get it here or, or get it there, whatever. I'm going to go there and serve God there and fulfill. No! It will not happen. If you don't believe me, when I first go say the name, you know, time to play to Christ, I was preaching. I'm like, every Sunday, man, I'm like, what's wrong with this guy, man? Leave me alone, no. Why is he talking about me again? I'm like, what's wrong with him? And the next service, I didn't talk to anybody. Hello, hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And the guy preached. Everything I have, everything I experienced, I we he preached again. I'm like, this guy's making uncomfortable, man. You know? So what did I do? For that one, I had a friend. You know, that's always a friend. I had a friend that was in that church. So he invited me to the church. It was on Saturday afternoon in South East London. So I went there, I sat there. I said, you know what's happening? You know, good people. As I sat there, I felt out of place. The Holy Ghost says, you don't belong here. Go back to Paul's house. That's where I have you. You get what I'm saying? You know, the will of God has an address. Yes. Mm. And you're not here by accident. You're here for a purpose. Mm. God's brought you here and then because He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. Mm. You can look around anyone in this place and then you're all going to see you like heaven anyway. <laughs> exactly. True, true. You know? You must sit on that side because of that person's side there, you know, and you might interchange the following week. But listen, we're all going to watch you together yeah, forever. That's right. So, Master, what can you say, shall I be? <laughs> Amen. Simon simply, a Cornelius simply obey God. Can I ask you this afternoon? What has God spoken to you about that you made up your mind that you're not going to do? <laughs> what is God? What has God spoken to you about? And you say, No, what I'm doing it. Come on, preach. I wonder how many of you in this place are fighting God. Because I'm telling you something, there will always be a consequence yep. for every action that is a reaction. Mm. What you sow is what you reap. Mm -hmm. But thank God for Cornelius, Cornelius to simply obey God. Mm. And we'll find out what happened afterwards. In verse 7, amen. It says, And when the angel who spoke to him and departed, 
Cornelius called his two household servants and divorced soldiers in and sent them off straight away, immediately. He did not delay. Oh, hmm. let me see how I feel. Let me see if the feeling is still there. Excuse me, this is not a matter of feeling. Mm. It's a matter of obedience. Yes, come on. Last week, amen. God spoke to Lord you last week. Lord of you go worse last week. Yes. My question is those words, they were not from, from God. Mm. What are you doing about it? That's right. Are you running with it? Because I'm telling you, your future and the future of your family is depending on what you do, what we're asking to do. Yes, preach it. Preach it. If you don't believe me, the Ruby family. Pastor Ruby, Pastor Ray, he got saved. God saved him. After he got saved, people were walking in. Oh, oh, oh. He said, no, no, I'm just going to go to church. As a result, a man began to bring his brothers. Second one, one, two, three, four, five, and they all live for God. As a result of that, they all still say, Amen, doing something for God and their children and their grandchildren. Yes, yes. Because of that step of obedience, mm. what is God asking you to do that you don't want to do? Mm. That is what's going to lead to your demise. When God asks you to do something, it's because God knows, amen, God can see the danger ahead. God can see tomorrow. God can see down the line. Obey God. Yes, that's right. Immediately, straight away. It's for your good. Mm. It's for your family good, amen. Simply obey God. Obey Him. He's bringing a sacrifice. Yes, Don't try and back it with God. God, I'm not doing that. I will do this though. This one is easier. No, 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 no. You, you're fooling yourself. Mm. What you sow is what you reap. Mm. There's nothing as worse as disobeying God. And you, and you see the consequence plays out. Mm. I've seen people disobey God. And as a result of that, they tell from the backside. It's horrible feeling. It is it. How would you feel if somebody ended up in hell because of you? Yeah, come on. How, how would you feel? Mm. How would you feel because of your disobedience? Mm. Because of your unwillingness? Because of your stubbornness? Mm. Because of your arrogance? Name it all. People end up in hell. Hey! Yeah, preach it. Oh! That doesn't respond with me. Mm. I don't want I don't want me to be against excuses. Hey, come on. The Bible says Cornelius immediately. Immediately. He said, you know what? Go and find this guy called Peter. Mm. Hey! Come on, preach it. Anyway, please obey God. Amen. Obey God. As nothing as worse as God forbid, as seeing the mistake you made, your own children makes it. Okay. And your grandchildren makes it. Mm. So tell me, who's going to break the circle? Mm. Who's going to break the circle? Why don't you be the one that breaks it? Right. Why don't you be the one that says, you know what? I'm going to obey God. Mm. I'm going to forgive that person. Amen. Even if I don't feel like it. Even if my dad, 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 all of them hate these people. No, I'm going to love them. Mm. I'm going to reach out the olive tree. Mm. I'm going to reach out for peace. Amen. I'm going to be the arrow to what is right before God. Mm. Cornelius. Immediately, yes, no guarantee they will find this guy called computer. No guarantee, man, is good. Guys, God says, Go, mm. your future, my future, our future is linked to obedience. Yes, 
You cannot pray your way out of this one. You cannot fast your way out of this one. How deep God prays me. I'm going to close to the reward of obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. As Peter came in, there, Peter responded in there because of time. Amen. Peter responded in there, the message. Peter, isn't it amazing? If you're in your own time, you can read Acts 10. God spoke to Peter mm, yeah. in advance that some people are going to come and knock on for him. So God prepared Peter. Why did God prepare Peter? You know why God prepared Peter? Because Cornelius obeyed straight away. Yes. I believe the moment Cornelius says, guys, go. I believe straight away. God spoke to Peter. Yes. Mm. Three men are coming for you. Follow them. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. In your praise, Amen. Hallelujah. Peter was about to preach the great preparation. Amen. Peter was prepared by the Holy Ghost. And so was Cornelius. That is why it's good to pray before silence. Yes, 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 yes. Come to prayer before service. Sunday so morning, your pastor was in there, made all of God, amen. And our, and our brother saw the worship team, amen. Come to prayer. Anyway, we're coming down. Amen. When you go to when you go to church, amen, every preacher's great joy is when God's people are prepared. Yes, yes, yes. You can sit on the exam. Have you ever, don't be happy for that. Have you ever sat on the exam and you know you haven't prepared for it? Yeah. You know, yeah. It's a horrible feeling. You pray before service. Let me tell you something. When you pray before service, do you know who benefits the most? It's you. It's you. It's you. He said, Apostle preached, and you after the service, you're like, who did the preacher buy again? He couldn't even see. If you don't pray before service, why was your time there come to church? Can you imagine a farmer? He's got his seed in his hand. You're supposed to till the soil, isn't it? Mm. Hello? Yes. Imagine a farmer got the seed. Uh, And walked away. Will you grow? No. Prayer before service, our heart is like a soil. The farmer is, is digging the soil, ruining the soil, ruining the rubbish. Anything that we eat in the last from, from growing, the farmer will come and till the soil, clean it, repair it. Prayer before service. It, it will just take minutes before service. Can you there? Listen, not every church has the opportunity. Sure. You do seize the opportunity. Come earlier. Get out of God. Was that after we offered your worship? Yes. Amen. As a close. Come on. Come here. Yes. Your prayers and your gifts has come before God. As in the Moria. If we don't pray before service, it's a memorial. Yes. You're offering to God. It's sweet before God. Yes. It's accepted by God. It's special to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. For the use of it, let's close. What is the reward? Amen. While Peter was just speaking those words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many, as many, as came with Peter. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out on the Gentile also, and for they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God, then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid this to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just on behalf? Come on. Because of Corinthians' obedience, his entire our family was saved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's what family was saved. Simple obedience, prayer, giving 
giving of gifts. Reaching out to people. It's all for when God says, and God baptizes. What am I saying? Whatever you do for God is not in vain. Yes. Emerson. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15 58. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding in the works of the Lord. For your labors are not in vain in the Lord. Yes, yes. Whatever you do for God is not in vain. It's not a waste. As a closing name, back to the Ruby Brothers again. One of the brothers was saved. No doubt about it. God was up challenging, convicting, dealing with him. He just responded, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No knowing through him getting saved, all of his brothers would be saved, serving God today, yes. living for God. Four of them are pastors. Hallelujah. Amen. All saved. Can you imagine the amount of children you want to have? And grandchildren living for God? Yes. All because one brother says yes to God. Okay. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do it. What whosoever you want to forgive, I will forgive them. Whatever you want to let go, I will let go of. Come on. Yes. 